So welcome to part two. And Vince, you were talking about your um, yeah. service work. And yes. At the beginning, we, we did things which we thought were important. But eventually we found that it was just an intermediate or initial step. And we have to move on to stage two, stage three. And we began to drop the other initial stages because <clears throat> we were in effect dealing with symptoms and not the root causes. So through the years, the service work that we did went deeper and deeper into the root causes. So for example, now we are focusing on education, on character building, on youth development. Because before, we used to deal with community, uh, adults in the communities, even helping them with livelihood in order to help them, uh, help alleviate their, their lives. But these are things which many people are already doing, but no one is doing a more basic thing, which is, in effect, character building. Uh, young people may be taught how to uh, make a living, but if there's a problem with their character, their lives would not be a happy one, nor really be an effective one, if they only develop the skill of knowing how to earn money, but uh, be somebody who's very difficult to live with when they have when they get married, when they have children, they'll become problems to humanity in effect. So uh, that's how we proceeded with our phases of service work in the TS and the Philippines. And we always have to keep in mind two things. First, are we addressing root causes? And second, um, is there a theosophical element in that kind of service work. We decided to identify what would make a service work theosophical. For example, if you feed people, that's very helpful. But between many opportunities for service, which ones would be the most important? So for us, we look at it from the theosophical point of view. So we identified a few things which we would consider as having us the theosophical elements of service work or any other activity in in theosophical work. For example, anything which would promote universal brotherhood or sisterhood, unity, then there would be a theosophical element to that one. Anything which would build character, especially among young people, because this would be the foundation of spirituality or living the higher life, then that one would be would have a theosophical element. Anything which would uh, uh, br help bring about spirituality, which, mean, which means the mystical life or the development of intuition, mm -hmm. then that would have a, a theosophical element in it. So we identify these things and whatever it is that we do, if you find these things in there, then we'd say, go ahead, it's part of a theosophical work. But among those, we will also have priorities, the most important, less important. And then we go according to those priorities after. <laughs> um, what are the ages you work with, um, with your schools? In this school, you mean the students? Yes, the students. It starts from three years old, okay. nursery, okay. up to college, which is about 20, 21 years old. And how could somebody uh, find out more about your work with the schools? Is there a web address? Yes. That, yes, please. Could you? It's um, uh, theosophy.ph. Okay. Then slash golden link college dot html. Okay. And also we'll have a bibliography here where we'll link people to the, to your school. All right. Um, um, could I ask? Um, let's say let's say there's a person uh, brand new to theosophy and they're an eager, young, or whatever age student, what advice would you give them how to embrace theosophy? What should, what should they do? Hmm. Well, first of all, several things come to my mind. I'm trying to see in what way we can quickly address the issue. We're, when we speak about theosophy, we may refer to a range of things from formal theosophy to 
applied theosophy like character building and which one we will choose to address a certain person or a certain group of people would depend upon who they are and what would be first relevant to them. For example, to individuals who are not really interested in mystical things or spiritual things, then it would be better to speak about applied theosophy like values, relationship, uh, emotional distress, stress, and, and then they will find, oh, there's a way to handle these uh, stresses and discomforts in life. And when they, when they see that there is a body of wisdom that helps them solve many basic issues and important issues in their life, then they may become interested, where does this come from? And then they will see that it is rooted in a body of wisdom, which is called theosophy. And then they may or may not go into it. If they are ready for that, then they will ask and then we begin to explain more things about the planes of nature, karma, reincarnation, and so on. Then they move on uh, more deeply if they wish to. So the spiritual element of theosophy, the mystical part, is actually, mm, well, relevant only a small percentage of our audience. A lot of people will not be interested, will not be inclined, even if they can intellectually understand. And therefore, to them, it's more the applied side of theosophy that should be given to them. So knowing, having a, a, a range of subject matter to speak about when we are introducing theosophy, we can we can choose which ones would be most relevant to a particular audience. To a religious group, for example, those who are interested in religion, you may start with religion. It may start even with the Bible. And then when they begin, I often encounter that people who are trying to convince me to, to accept Jesus or what in order to be saved, then I would um, go into a conversation with them about this and then ask certain questions which is usually which would usually confuse them because um, those who have gone deeply enough into biblical studies would find that there are things which on the surface it would look very confusing and self-contradictory and then when they get stuck up with this confusion then we introduce the deeper layers of religious studies and now this would be a way of understanding the ageless wisdom so again it depends we conduct uh, seminars to business groups. Mm. They invite us. It may start with team building, stress management, uh, self development, and from there, which are really part applied theosophy. Then they may some of them may become interested in theosophy itself, and then some of them may be, even become members. So, how to introduce theosophy? Uh, I think it depends on the audience. But on the whole, I would say, start with applied theosophy without going into technical theosophy. And if they want the rest, they'll find a way to find it. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to just thank you. I know how busy you are. I know how much you do. And I just want to thank you so much for sharing some of this for us. It's very inspirational. And just seeing you kind of around here, um, treating everybody with so much kindness is really just a, such a great lesson. So thank you. So it's been a wonderful time, even these few days, I find that I'm, I feel very much at home okay. with the people, with the place, and uh, such a nice facility that you have here. There's so much that I'm learning from, from you, from the others. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.